Hey yo, I'm Miss Linnea Lark and I'm back with another two point perspective draw along tutorial for ya. Today we're going to be drawing an exploded view of a three story house. This is my second tutorial on two point perspective. If you missed the first one you might want to start there by clicking on the card at the top right of your screen. This video is a draw along where I will walk you through each drawing step one at a time. When I'm talking make sure that you're paying attention to what I'm doing so you don't miss a step. When you see this golden pause button on the bottom of your screen you'll know that it's safe to look away and try it for yourself. Let's collect all our supplies. You'll need two sheets of legal sized paper, a nice ruler or triangle, an eraser, a mechanical pencil if possible, and today you'll also need some washi tape. Really any tape will work but I like washi tape because it unsticks very easily. Go ahead and assemble those supplies now. Before we begin drawing let's take a second to observe what we're going to be drawing. We're going to be drawing a three story home with a door, some windows, a balcony, and even a pool. This drawing is in what's called an exploded view where we have separated each story of the house. They're connected by vertical dotted dashed lines. Those dotted dashed lines show where each corner of each story is separated in the exploded view. This is a really helpful exercise for beginning perspective students because you can see how the bottom floor is completely below the horizon line and you can actually see inside the top. In the middle box that goes through the horizon line you cannot see the top or the bottom of of that story while the third story has its bottom visible. Also notice that because the balcony is above the horizon line and our viewpoint we can mainly see the bottom of the balcony. The house looks like it is coming up out of the ground while the pool looks like it's going down into the ground. So lots of valuable lessons to learn. Let's get into it. Today I'm going to show you how to draw on a tall and skinny vertical paper using two point perspective. When doing perspective on tall skinny papers your drawings tend to look really warped. Almost like a fisheye effect if your vanishing points get too close. Notice in this example that the front corner of my box looks extremely pointy. So to avoid this pitfall we are going to try to widen our vanishing points by extending our horizon line and vanishing points wider than our skinny paper is. Start by placing the first paper down vertically straight up and down. Then place your second paper horizontally on top of that first paper making a cross. Try to get them as straight and perpendicular as possible making sure that the horizontal paper is in the middle of the vertical paper. Then take two pieces of tape and secure the top sides. Do the same on the bottom so that your paper is securely joined with four wide pieces of tape. This will ensure that your paper doesn't shift or flex while you're drawing lines with your ruler. Go ahead and add your first and last name to the bottom of your paper with your period number on it. If we don't finish this drawing today all you'll have to do is fold back the long wings so that you can place these drawings in your folders. And then next class you can unfold them and flatten them and continue working just as is. Okay, flip your papers over. If you have attached them correctly your tall skinny vertical paper will be on top and you will no longer be able to see the tape on the back. We're ready to draw some two point perspective. Who remembers what the first line we draw is? That's right, the horizon line. Who remembers what the horizon line separates? The horizon line separates the sky from the earth. We're going to draw our horizon line right through the middle of our papers. And then as far away as I can get them I draw my tiny vanishing points at either end of my horizon line. Go ahead. Let's do a little reminder of our two rules for two point perspective. Rule number one is that all vertical lines go straight up and down. Always, all the time. There's no exception to that rule. Rule number two is that all horizontal lines go to a vanishing point. Pretty easy. However, today we're going to learn the difference of going to a vanishing point and going away from a vanishing point. There's a little sophistication there today. But no matter what you want to draw, whether it's a box, a building, a door, a window, a pool, or a balcony, all you have to do is identify what lines are vertical and which lines are horizontal. Right now we're going to draw all three stories of our house at once. Now don't get confused. A house is just a box with details. 
Who remembers what lines we start with when drawing a box? Yes, the front corner. And what kind of line is the corner? That's right, a vertical line. And all vertical lines go straight up and down. Once I get my ruler lined up, I'm going to draw all three lines at once. The bottom one is close to the very bottom of my paper. My line is about two and a half inches long, roundabouts. And then I skip about two inches and draw another similar line that goes right through the middle of the horizon line. I skip another two inches or so and then draw my top line near the top of the paper. Notice how I have all of the front corners of all three of my stories. Go ahead and give it a try. Now that we have the front corners of our three stories, does anybody remember the next step to making the corners into boxes? Yeah, we're gonna take the tops and bottoms of each line to each vanishing point. Let's start with the left side. Go ahead and draw six lines to the left vanishing point. Each line should connect to the top or bottom of one of these vertical lines and then go to the left vanishing point. Go ahead. All right, now we're going to do the same thing on the right side. Go for it. Now we have all these walls that look like they're extending into infinity. We have to decide where to cut them off. Let's start with the left side, as that is going to be our longer of the two sides today. I line up my ruler or triangle with the bottom of my paper and cut off all three walls at once. Make sure that all three of your vertical lines go straight up and down and that you're drawing them on the tall, skinny paper. Then erase all the extras. Do that now. Now let's do the right side. The right wall should be shorter than the left wall so that we have room for our backyard pool later on. Notice that I'm only erasing my guidelines that are on the top skinny paper. When you're done erasing all the guidelines, make sure to also erase the horizon line where it goes through the middle story. Our building won't be see-through, so we won't be able to see where it intersects with our building. Go ahead and erase that now. What part of our bottom story are we missing? That's right, the top. Who remembers how to close off the top of a box? Yeah, we draw two horizontal lines going to the opposite vanishing points. Go ahead. The middle story looks good because it's going through the horizon line. We can't see the top or bottom. But notice, what part of the top story are we missing? That's right, the bottom of it. Let's close it off with horizontal lines that go to the opposite vanishing points now. Now, in drafting and in blueprints, in the exploded views, we line up the corners with a dotted dashed line. So I line up my ruler with each corner, making sure that my ruler is straight up and down, and I draw a dotted dashed line from the bottom of the top floor's right corner to the top of the middle corner. Dash dot, dash dot, dash dot. And then I do it all again between the middle floor and the bottom floor's right corner. Once you get the right corner, you have three corners to go. Do that now. Now, since we're looking at an exploded view, let's imagine that all the floors and ceilings of each story stuck to the middle story. That means that the bottom floor won't have a ceiling, but we will be able to see down inside of it, kind of like a shoebox. Let's go ahead and find the floor and bottom back corner. We connect the bottom corners to the opposite vanishing points, but notice that I'm using a dotted line for the floor because I am not able to see it without my x-ray vision. The front walls are in the way. Where those dotted lines intersect, I erase the rest of the guideline. Go ahead. Okay, but now I need the vertical back corner, which will be a straight up and down line. I use my ruler to line up the top and bottom corners of the bottom story, and if I have done a good job, my ruler should be going straight up and down. And it is! Hallelujah! Now notice that when I draw my vertical lines, that the area where it is visible through the non-existent roof, my vertical line will be solid. But when it goes out of my view, I change to a dotted line. Your box probably won't look just like mine. Your lines may be more or less dotted or solid. Go ahead and give it a try. 
Let's do it one more time on the top floor. I find the ceiling of the top floor with dotted horizontal lines that go to the opposite vanishing points. Where they intersect is the back corner of my roof. I erase any remaining lines and then I connect the top and bottom back corners with a vertical line. Notice that because my corners are all very precise and because I have made sure to always hit my vanishing points, all my back corners line up with a perfectly straight vertical line. Woohoo! Go ahead. All right, now it's time to teach you a little lesson in proportions. Let's say we have a mountain range and a large cactus in front, but we wanted to draw more cacti in our scene. Let's say we drew one all the way up here on the mountain range. Would that look right? No, that second cactus is way too big. If there was another cactus up on that mountain range, it would probably look like a small wee bitty little dot. And that's even if we could see it from all the way in front. I drew that cactus way too big. And that's an example of proportions. The size and scale of one part of your drawing will tell you how big another part of your drawing is. When we're drawing a house, the front door is our main scale. If I drew a small front door, my house would look huge, like a three-story mansion. If I drew a big front door, it's going to look like a three-story shack. I don't really care one way or another for this practice drawing. It can be big or small, but I just want you to understand that the door will help your viewers understand the scale of your home because most front doors are the same size and are built for an average size person to walk through. Before we start drawing our door, let's look at one and observe what kinds of lines we'll be drawing. Notice that the right and left sides of the door are both vertical lines and in two point perspective, vertical lines go straight up and down. Notice that the top and bottom of the door are both horizontal lines and in two point perspective, all horizontal lines go to a vanishing point. Okay, so let's try it out in our drawing. I start by drawing two vertical lines from the bottom up. I'm careful that I put them close enough that I can make a door shape on this wall. Go ahead. I then line my ruler up with the left vanishing point because the door is on the left side of my house. I then adjust my ruler so that I can draw the top of my door and erase any extra guidelines. I don't need to draw the bottom of my door as it's already the bottom of the first floor. And then I draw a doorknob. Okay, it's your turn. Windows are exactly the same thing as doors. Notice how a window is also made up of two vertical lines and two horizontal lines. But windows vary more in size and shape. We're going to be drawing two windows and you can draw them any variety of shape that you want. Let's start with the vertical lines of two windows. Then I line up the ruler with the left vanishing point and draw the tops and bottoms of those windows all at once. I can then erase my corners so that they look neat. Go ahead. Notice that the closer of the two windows looks bigger and taller than the one farther away. That's the magic of the math of vanishing points. Now we're gonna make two different window panes. The first is going to have a classic window pane with a vertical and horizontal line going through it. The problem is that because the windows are in perspective, they are warped looking. The left sides of the windows are smaller than the right sides. That's because they're going to the vanishing point. So we can't measure the middle with a ruler. We're gonna have to use some good old fashioned geometry. I know that's your favorite. Here we go. <laughs> you can find the middle of a window by drawing an X and connecting the opposite corners. Once I have my X, I can see that the middle point is the true middle of the window. I put my pencil point on the center of the X and line it up with the left vanishing point to get the horizontal middle line. And then I line my ruler up going straight up and down through that middle point and it gives me the vertical middle. Now I erase the X and I'm all done. Your turn. For our second window, we're gonna just do a simple horizontal line for the window pane. These types of window panes are usually used on skinny windows, but whatever you got will be fine. Go ahead and try that now. 
Now, before we move on too fast, you guys know enough about perspective at this point to try your hand at sketching little details into your drawing in perspective. If you get ahead of your classmates and have to wait for the next step, I'd like you to practice adding details to your perspective. As you can see, I'm making my window panes and door frames thicker so it starts to look more realistic. You could add curtains, paneling, window boxes, any kind of detail that you think you might be able to pull off. But don't do it now because I got something else to show you. Up next, we're going to make a walkway and a sidewalk going out of our door. Notice that sidewalks are mostly flat on the ground. When objects are flat on the ground, they are made 100% of horizontal lines. If you were to use a vertical line to create a walkway, it would look weird like a ladder coming out of the core of the earth going straight to your front door. So clearly that's not gonna work. So let's start by finding the bottom corners of our door because that's where we want the sidewalk to go. To make a sidewalk pop out from the two points, we're going to have to use opposite vanishing points. We're kind of drawing backward. Since the door is on the left side of the house, we're gonna line the two points up with the right vanishing point and draw horizontal lines outward from each of those bottom corners of the door. Go ahead. Notice that the walkway now looks like we could walk right up to that house. It's in perspective. Now let's make a sidewalk that attaches to the walkway. This time we'll line the ruler up with the left vanishing point and draw two lines for the sidewalk. Go ahead. And then you can draw the lines on the sidewalk going to the right vanishing point. But make sure the blocks that are in front look like they're larger than the blocks that are further away. This will help give our drawing some illusion of depth. Go ahead. All right, up next is a small balcony on the third floor. Let's observe what kind of lines we're going to need. The sides and corners are all vertical lines. Vertical lines go straight up and down. The tops and bottoms of the balcony are horizontal lines and they will be going to the different vanishing points. Let's start with the floor. The floor of the balcony is made 100% of horizontal lines. I start by drawing the sides of the floor extending out from the left vanishing point. It's a good idea to make your lines a little longer than you think you'll need them. Go ahead. I then use the right vanishing point to complete this shallow rectangle for the floor of the balcony, and then I clean up the corners. Go ahead. Okay, now we have a flat rectangle extending out from the third story. We need the height of the balcony. I'm going to need a vertical line extending up from all four of these corners. Remember to go a little bit further than you think you need. Go ahead. Now I need the top railing so that nobody falls off of this balcony, at least not before I draw the pool. The top of the railing is made of horizontal lines. Always start with the corner that is closest to you, the viewer. I choose a height to make the top of the railing. I take that front corner to the left vanishing point for the short side of the balcony, and then I go to the right vanishing point from that same spot for the long side of the balcony. Notice that when I'm finished, all three lines are connected. Your turn. I use my ruler to draw my vertical banister bars, and then I sketch a thick handrail. If you have extra time between steps, that's a detail you could add as well. If you don't have time, no worries, your balcony will just be made of glass, wink, wink. But I do want all of you to draw a door because what's the point of having a nice balcony if you can't access it? I'm not going to explain what I'm doing this time. Let's see if you can observe me drawing a door and then figure it out for yourself. Go ahead. On to the swimming pool. Swimming pool sidewalks are flat on the ground while the pool itself goes down into the ground. The shape of the pool and the sidewalks will be made out of horizontal lines going to the vanishing points. But the pool has a back corner, which is a vertical line, and this vertical line is what makes the pool look like it's going deep into the ground. Let's give it a try. I use the left and right vanishing points to draw a large rectangle behind the house. Go ahead. I then use the left and right vanishing points to draw the sidewalks around that pool. Use your best judgment on how large and wide you want to make them. Go ahead. 
Right now our pool looks like a giant rug on the backyard. We need to make the pool go down into the ground using a vertical line. Which corner of the pool are we missing? That's right, the far left back corner. Go ahead and draw a vertical line going down from that corner that will be the deep end of the pool. From the bottom of that vertical line, go away from both vanishing points to draw the bottom corners of the pool. Because we are inside of a shape, we need to go away from the vanishing points instead of toward them. Go ahead. On the opposite side of the back corner, draw the shallow end of the pool headed toward the left vanishing point. Go ahead. Now we're going to hand draw a soft ramp connecting the two lines. Your ramp will be a diagonal line. Go ahead and do that. Draw a little dot on the top and bottom of that diagonal line where it touches the deep end and where it touches the shallow end. From those dots, we're going to draw horizontal lines going away from the right vanishing point so that we can see how the pool slopes from a shallow depth to a deep depth. Your turn. Lastly, we're going to jazz up our backyard. Let's draw some mountains behind our building and pool. Let's put a sun in the sky. The sun isn't as huge as you think it is, and my goodness, if I catch you drawing sun rays out from your sun, I might lose it completely. High school students, please, I beg of you not to draw rays on your suns. We're not in elementary school anymore. That's not what the sun looks like. Okay, I'm not trying to be judgy, but don't do it. Now let's add some clouds. Check out the shape of a cloud. It's kind of flat on the bottom and round and randomly fluffy on the top. They shouldn't look perfectly scalloped or else they're going to read as fake. Like the clouds from Toy Story. Those are just a little bit too perfect to be real. They should look random and varied. Large clouds should be at the top of the page. And the closer those clouds get to the mountain ranges at the bottom, the smaller that they'll be. That gives the illusion of distance. And last of all, look how silly and flat the bottoms of those mountains look. It's a straight across line and it breaks our image up. I'm not into it. But also, that's not what mountains actually look like. This looks like they're tucked behind the earth instead of coming up out of the earth. Look at the bottom of these real life mountains. They take up some of the ground and are almost like giant triangles. Let's go ahead and draw the bases of these mountains. And then add any finishing touches. When you're done, you can carefully peel away your washi tape and admire your 3D world. Thank you guys for drawing some perspective with me today. I love perspective because it's so powerful and I see my students year after year get enthralled with being able to draw such amazing three-dimensional worlds. Next time we're going to learn how to make roofs and chimneys. Hope to see you there. If you liked this tutorial, please like and subscribe so that you can see more. But before you go, I'd like to thank my master teacher whose name I cannot remember for the life of me. It's been almost 20 years since I was a student teacher. He taught me this lesson and it has helped 18 years of my students master two point perspective. I think his name started with a V. So thank you, Mr. V from Indiana, Pennsylvania and happy day.